गौड़ गोष्ठ पति श्री शिल भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर जगत गुरु श्री प्रभुपाद सेड दैट टू एक्सट्रैक्ट अ बद्ध जीव अ कंडीशन सोल फ्रॉम द प्रेजेंट हाउस ऑफ महामाया एंड देयर बाय टू फ्री दिस बद्ध जीव एंड टू सबमिट हिम एट द लोटस फीट ऑफ भगवान दिस सेवा दिस इज द ग्रेटेस्ट फेवर that one can do for somebody gaurya goshtapati shishila bhakti sidhan saraswati thakur jagat guru has said that to free one conditioned um soul one one soul one baddha jeev from the prison house of maya thereby breaking his connection this conditioned baddha jeev's connection with Maya, and thereby submitting him at the lotus feet of Sri Bhagwan, and allowing him to eternally serve the Lord, this seva or this service that is being that is performed by someone is such a great favor, such a great act of kindness, which cannot be understood by a common person, by a common man. they are not able to comprehend that is these common uh, people they are not able to comprehend um the magnitude and the importance of this seva of uh, liberating the baddha jeev instead they are busy with uh, some immediate social work or social service this is such a huge service that shri chaitanya mahaprabhu propagated and all our guru varg as well following in his stead have propagated the same service what to speak of our guru parampara even um up the chain in the disciplic succession nityanand prabhu himself was instructed by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu to go to everybody's homes and to instruct them about the chanting of the holy name thereby asking nityanand prabhu to go about this process of liberating the baddha jeev the conditioned soul from their entanglement with maya the bhagavad gita uh, the puranas the mahabharat all of these get uh, and many other scriptures they all get uh, assimilated through the shrimad bhagavatam in fact in all these scriptures including the shrimad bhagavatam the puranas the bhagavad gita um and and uh, the Mah- all these scriptures uh the solution is hidden so definitely the word upanishad also has a meaning upa means near nishad means sitting by so therefore a personality who is uh, basically approaching bhag shri bhagwan or shri guru and and thereby interacting establishing a relationship by sitting close to these personalities that that is known as upanishad the deeper meaning of upanishad obviously there are a number of different thoughts all these are deeply hidden in the shrimad bhagavatam so yesterday the shloka we started with is the shloka that was uttered by shila pralad maharaj and uh, pralad maharaj is saying si thakur ji the saintly persons uh, for their as uh, for their auspiciousness um, they are um doing their bhajan remotely in a in in a in a in a, in a secluded spot um and thus they are benefiting society as well we are not talking about uh, those people who are pretending to be um uh, uh, you know sadhus and who are actually in fact causing harm to society so pralad maharaj is saying the, that these uh, great uh, sadhus uh, holy men uh, very often for their auspiciousness for their own mangal for their well being they go deep into the forest in a secluded spot to meditate so pralad maharaj is saying that ordinarily it is very difficult to find a person who is a sadhu who is doing these kinds of austerities for the well being and auspiciousness of everybody in the world 
it is more common to see somebody like a sadhu who is going into the forest and performing these austerities and performing meditation for their own benefit thus these sadhu these sadhus who are um, fully established and and are bona fide um and are performing their their activities um of serving uh, thakur ji but in in and in the process they are fully established in their intent of doing auspicious activities uh, for the well-being of all the inhabitants of this world without any selfish desires in the process so prahlad maharaj ji is saying look i am not so selfish like these uh, sadhus in the world um that i will i will uh, desert you and i will i will go into the forest but other than you my lord who else can uh, can can do uh, well uh, perform some acts of well being for the population at large thus the activity of the bona fide sadhu is very much that by th- performing his bhajan by performing his prayers he is asking for the lord to bless this world to benedict this world even radharani's goal is the same by uh, keeping krishna under her control she then and b- through her love she brings krishna under her control and then she instructs him to go and do auspicious things for the people at large and thus the life of the sadhu is dominated by their activities centered around the well-being of the population at large prahlad maharaj ji is saying other than you o oh my lord who is the support who is the shelter of the people in this world there are so many babas in this world who call themselves by so many different names but i have not seen anybody like shila prabhupad bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur contrast this with so many um, sadhus nowadays they are wearing very flashy clothes and they're sitting on a beautiful simhasan or a throne vyasasan so we have to change this mentality of people to follow such false sadhus if all the preachers of shri gaudimat get together and make a determination that we are going to keep shri la bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur's ideals at the top and follow them then it is possible so in this way ordinary people in this world uh, they think of the sadhu like this they imagine oh it's a sadhu so you know he will dress up in a certain way he will behave in a certain uh, way but in rea- he'll he'll dress up in a certain way but in reality uh, a sadhu is not determined by his by his external clothing or by his external appearance a uh, real sadhu is the one who 24 out of 24 hours is constantly engaged in the bhagan bhajan of shri bhagwan within such sadhu there is a continuous presence of divine or bhagwat emotions transcendental emotions constantly and they are constantly thinking and applying their mind about how all the inhabitants of this world can be benefited this is a sadhu thus prahlad maharaj is praying to bhagwan o bhagwan you are the shelter of the world without your support without your shelter where will all these uh, demon children go who will take care of them so yesterday we talked about this concept prasthano trey prasthan means to leave so so there there are three ways of performing prasthan so this prakashtha um is a very important word prakashtha means the topmost departure Pra- uh, prakashtha by itself means topmost <clears throat> and so together with the word prakashtha we are trying to ask the question here what is the topmost departure for the living entity so the living entity if he gives up all his attachment to maya to all material things and in the process of removing this attachment to material things this jivatma 
offers his body and his mind at the lotus feet of shri guru and after this after obtaining a teachings from shri guru and the vaishnavas the living entity attempts to follow these instructions in his life by imbibing them in his daily behavior and thus following in the footsteps of the shri guru and the vaishnavas the living entity or jivatma reaches the final destination what is that final destination that final destination is the eternal abode of the supreme lord yam prapya na nevartante tad dham paramam mama so those living beings who are able to reach my eternal abode they never return to this world which is full of endless cycle of repeated birth and death so by this expression thus this prasthanotre means there are three ways by which you will start gradually walking on the path for your eternal well being for your eternal benefit and thereby you reach the eternal destination the abode of the lord this is prasthanotre we consider the vedanta the upanishads and the gita vedanta means what has been created by dwaipanya vyas dev it is formulaic in nature the real meaning of it is hidden athato brahma jigyasa that's how it is written thus ved vyas has put together a series of small formulas and in the vedanta sutra all these uh, gems these hidden gems are located madasya yato so in similar way so many small gems are present within these vedanta sutras in these vedanta sutras shri vyas dev has placed all the keys to the welfare of the people of this world and it is not up to the intelligence of a common person a common man to correctly interpret and understand the meaning of these sutras there are many people many big big vedantists they they call themselves very proudly and address themselves as vedantis these great vedantists they themselves go crazy trying to figure out the meaning of the vedantas because this meaning is esoteric in nature and it is not something that can be acquired just through application of uh, independent intelligence if the vedantist thinks that oh i have so much knowledge and thereby i should be able to correctly interpret the meaning of the vedantas that will not result in the correct outcome and they will not be successful so this vedantas they are manifest they manifest by themselves to those bhaktas who are surrendered those devotees who through the mercy of uh, gurudev guru maharaj um the vaishnavas bhagwan and thus relying purely on that mercy all the meaning is revealed to such persons mahaprabhu ji said to sarvabhaum bhattacharya look you are a very learned person so thus he is saying that sarvabhaum bhattacharya you are very intelligent man very learned man but only if you can figure out the true intent of the words spoken and written by shila vyas dev only then you will come to the correct conclusion in varanasi 2 he raised this argument in front of pravodanand saraswati thakur uh, thousands and thousands and thus in front of all these mayavadis it it was explained that if the true meaning the true import of the vedantas is revealed then that is the correct conclusion not otherwise that is why the vedanta sutras the writing the commentary 
by the Gaudiya uh, uh, community, the Gaudiya Sampradaya is known as Govinda Bhashya. And why is it called Govinda Bhashya? Because Sakshat or the Lord himself presented himself, Lord Govinda presented himself in front of Sri Baladev Vidya Bhushan Prabhu. And the Lord kept speaking and narrating while Sri Baladev Vidya Bhushan Prabhu kept writing. And the Lord himself appeared or came down as an uh, in avatar form as Sri Ved Vyas. If we think in this manner, this self-manifest or Svaprakash was the self-manifest object will never present itself in front of us. And the Upanishad was explained that uh, that person who is present all the time very near to Sri Hari, Guru and the Vaishnavas. So this doesn't mean just ordinary sitting near the uh, near Hari, Guru and Vaishnava. It really means someone who is deeply thinking about the instructions of Sri Hari Guru and Vaishnava and uh, through the application of his sincerity is trying to adapt these teachings in his life or attempting to adapt these teachings in his life. By following these ideals given to him, that is what is known as Upanishad. And thus the Bhagavad Gita it is actually a, uh, a part, a small portion of the Mahabharat. Even though it is an it, uh, uh, um, self-contained in the Mahabharat and it is not a separate document or a separate book as such, there was a need to separate it out from the Mahabharat and present it as such. So the question is, why was it why is it presented separated? separately or what is the need to present it separately and uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur explains that there is ample room for confusion if one were to completely uh, listen to the whole of the Mahabharat without separating out and reading the Gita by itself. This is because it is very difficult to understand every single anecdote and um, every single incidence uh, from the Mahabharat in the correct sense. Most people after listening to the Mahabharat, they, they proclaim that, oh, this Rishi and that Rishi, they did such and such. So if I were to repeat the same acts as these Rishis, then what? why am I to be at fault? I am just doing the very same thing that these great personalities have done. Although these scriptures like the Mahabharat are called Vijay Yantra or um, a, a, a Yantra or instrument, a way of um, actually uh, conquering the world uh, uh, and and uh, getting out of this cycle of repeated birth and death, but they they can be very confusing. And therefore, uh, Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur has instructed us not to necessarily necessarily study the Mahabharat. Because one may become confused by reading the Mahabharat in totality. Chila Bhakti Vinod Thakur has said that if the goal of your life is to attain Bhakti, then you should read and you should study the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. Why not follow the instruction of Chila Bhakti Vinod Thakur and on a daily basis study the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat? By following these instructions, one will surely attain Bhakti. And thus this Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads as far as they are concerned after every line at the end of every chapter it is written Gita Upanishad Srimad Bhagavad Gita Upanishad Mabhidnyayam Thus it is written Thus this Bhagavad Gita which is a part of the Mahabharat it is famously known as Srimad Bhagavad Gita This Bhagavad Gita is the personified voice of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Bhagwan. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna Chandra, from his lotus lips, this Bhagavad Gita has emanated. It is the Lord's nectarian voice. Some people 
uh, influenced by material thoughts uh, wonder and ask uh, why is this uh, bhagavad gita called to uh, said to be madhurya bhash or you know sweet um, uh, language or sweet instruction there is so much uh, fighting in the bhagavad gita we will explore this topic in a little bit of depth to understand uh, why this word madhurya or sweetness is associated with the bhagavad gita when there is so much fighting um, externally as seen from the eyes of a person who is engrossed in material activities what is madhurya uh, or or sweet uh, sweetness in the past times of shri bhagwan madhurya usually refers to to exemplify it when shri krishna is a small child a very small child a newborn infant and at that time putna arrived and picked up this infant child and took the child away and after that the leela or pastime that was performed by thakur ji this was not performed by the lord holding up the shankha chakra padma or gada uh, in other words uh, holding up the conch shell the chakra the uh, lotus flower or his uh, mace this was not performed using those heroics thus an ordinary in externally appearing ordinary infant he is able to kill putna yeah so in this context we are saying that he killed putna but in one sense he delivered her that putna whose breast milk the lord drank that putna is so fortunate so this uh, episode with putna where the lord uh, delivered putna he it was not a situation where the lord had to use the mace the conch shell the lotus or um the sudarshan chakra um but it was actually none of those it was a very sweet past time similarly the other leelas of the lord like dam bandhan um where the lord is tied up to the um to the uh, grinding motor the uh, the deliverance of uh, some so many demons like uh, uh, trinavakra and uh, so similarly the trinavartas uh, liberation also falls into the same category jitna sare ye ye so hai usme vichar karne jaye to thakur ji apna hi you know ye ye avastha mein jaise manush leela hai waise hi kar di so in all these different types of leelas the lord is enacting human like pastimes there is no use of shankha chakra gada padma in any of these situations many of these pastimes seem impossible or infeasible uh, because we think about with our mortal intelligence the natural emotions that are present in this human form um of an ordinary person while the lord is enacting the human like pastimes he is without violating or surpassing any of these ordinary human emotions he is performing these leelas these pastimes that is the real sweetness of these pastimes because the lord is enacting them in an in a way in the natural flow of human um, emotions and feelings he is not trying to surpass them and um express his aishwarya thus whatever pastimes the lord is the human like pastimes the lord is performing they um have this sweetness hidden in them in the kaliya daman leela too the lord is a small boy and he is enacting such beautiful pastimes the lord started to dance on the hood of the kaliya snake thus as the lord is dancing on the serpent kaliya this kind of pastime is all in the mode of um sweetness 
the lord is available to all the jeevas he's present in these leelas as a friend to all living beings the whole world in a true sense has only one friend there is not another and that one friend is thakur ji himself tvameev mata ch pita tvameev tvameev bandhu ch sakha tvameev we spoke about this yesterday how the lord is our mother our father our dear friend on one hand the lord is present as a as a friend at all times to all the jeevas to all the living beings in this world while at the same time the everybody in this world has assumed the position of an adversary or an enemy of the lord this is our deep misfortune all the to- time the lord is endeavoring to see how to make us walk the path that will bring us uh, bring us peace that will bring us to him at the time that this most abominable and most uh, horrifying war is about to start in kurukshetra this discourse on the bhagavad gita takes place so at this fearful time of war in kurukshetra this discourse is occurring on the bhagavad gita as if it is under under the control of time space and matter and seen externally it may appear that th- that this is a historical occurrence or a historical event it is claimed that this discourse on the bhagavad gita happened within the paradigm of time space and matter so why not just treat it as an ordinary historical event the first point to be made is that time space and matter are interrelated in the context of this material world time space and matter are all interrelated but in the context of the transcendental world the uh, the question of a transcendental timing comes into play this time is not an ordinary material time but in fact a transcendental time einstein while describing his theory talked about time space and matter that are relevant in this theory of relativity there is something in here that ordinary people do not understand um, and that einstein hinted upon he repeatedly called out time travel this concept of time travel is not possible within this material world within the paradigm of this material world for instance shrimati radharani she picked up flowers from kusum sarovar and then she left and after that she went to radha kund after performing past times there at radha kund she went to surya kund it takes time to do these leelas it is easy to speak about them but in reality it would take time the intelligence of living entities in this world is corrupted by maya or the illusory energy of the lord it is for this reason that they have a corrupted intelligence it is for this reason that they perceive things in a material way these pure devotees of the lord they are continuously performing these uh, pastimes of seva and it is the responsibility of yog maya to ensure and to enable the travel of these um, transcendental personalities this is a specialty speciality of uh, the people who are serving in this spiritual world in this transcendental realm that they are always deeply absorbed in the performance of this service to thakur ji in the meantime yogmaya is just performing its duty she is enabling where certain service is to be performed and where certain circumstances have to be created while speaking the krishna katha uh, going to radha kund surya kund how much time it takes for an ordinary person it would be quite time consuming in the material realm but when we think about radha rani and the sakhis her um, the her, her friends the other gopis uh, it the, the time component is immaterial the time that it takes in the aprakrit world or in the transcendental world is not 
within our control on the other hand the time aspect time space and matter in this material world are all interrelated in nature here it may be beneficial to understand the conception of time space and matter thus if we apply it to a body of matter like a human human um there would be considerations around what is the mass of this body that moved how much distance it moved and how much time it took for it to move thus in this situation time space and matter come into play however this is the material realm in the spiritual realm which is the realm in which the bhagavad gita is spoken um to include these consideration of time space and matter these considerations of time space and matter would not be appropriate this bhagavad gita that emanates from the lotus lips of the lord and is the nectarian voice of the lord however um some people some material minded people may question or may may actually declare uh this occurrence as absurd the occurrence we are talking about is how come the lord is narrating this discourse or rendering this risk discourse right in the midst of this fearful and terrible battle that is going to wage soon in kurukshetra thus the material intelligence will consider this kind of an occurrence in this situation and circumstances as impossible or highly unlikely and this is all the fault of applying material intelligence to a spiritual situation thus this intelligence that thakur ji is narrating this bhagavad gita discourse right before the war is going to start just while they're standing and waiting for the war to start is very much an example of the materialistic thought process just now we explained that in the spiritual world uh, the time and other elements move according to the desire of thakur ji this time in this spiritual realm works under the direction of the supreme personality of godhead thakur ji himself here from an external vision one can understand that arjuna is is ordering the lord to move his chariot to the middle or to the center of the battlefield arjuna continues to say let us take a look at who all want to fight with me so arjuna instructs the lord to move the chariot to the marginal area between the two armies facing each other so that he can make an assessment of who he is going to be fighting with although the lord can do anything he desires to he followed the instructions of arjuna in the situation the lord is even willing to serve in the role of a servant um for the sake of his devotee for the sake of his devotee the lord knows no limits he is willing to do whatever his devotee needs lord did over and above what anyone can think in the case of the pandavas he did everything possible for the pandavas we will talk about that tomorrow so thus after giving this instruction the lord moves the chariot to the center of the battlefield and arjuna stands there and looks around and observes uh, all the warriors that have assembled there as far as what was the outcome after of of this um act of observing and assessing the warriors that had assembled there uh it uh, we will talk about that a little later in this situation though the lord in order to protect the the dharma um the duty the, the uh, or the swadharma the personal duty of arjuna the lord delivered this beautiful discourse in the midst of a battlefield to deliver such a long discourse clearly one needs time for thakur ji nothing is impossible it is very easy for thakur ji to increase the length of time or to reduce or draw down the length of time 
very easily. Therefore, one must accept with firm conviction that yes, this is possible for Thakurji to do. Because this is Lord Shri Krishna himself on the order and on the by the power of whom innumerable universes are set in motion and are maintained and are working. For such a Lord who is capable of maintaining so many universes and who is all powerful, can this can he not deliver this discourse in the middle of the battlefield just before the war is about to start? In the follow-up discourse at 2 p.m., we will understand how the Lord managed to perform the Ras Leela pastime with the Shat Koti or, you know, so many numerous gopis at the same time. Within the blink of an eye, the whole time had passed by. In real material um, terms, how long this Ras Leela pastime occurred is beyond anybody's understanding. One night of Brahma, if one tries to even calculate this duration, it is um, it is not possible. It is something inconceivable or something that is not um, that is utter nonsense. However, in this transcendental realm, this um, pleasure inducing instance uh, or um, instant um, quickly passed away. Based on consideration of transcendental time, uh, it is uh, completely possible um, for the Lord to have delivered this um, discourse within a short period of time, right before the beginning of the war at Kurukshetra. We started this discourse um, originally talked about Prasthanotray and there are so many uh, different varied Vedanta Sutras. Within each of these Sutras, there is a treasure trove of uh, so many Siddhantas or philosophical conclusions. If one can understand the philosophical conclusions of even one of these Vedanta Sutras, it can completely transform somebody's life. Uh, one Maharajji, he understood the philosophical conclusion or siddhanta of one of these sutras and after that he developed vairagya towards this world or uh, he developed um, a special uh, form of um, attraction and love for the Lord and thereby a form of detachment from this world. So this Maharajji came, he sat and he started listening to this uh, sadhu who has uh, is is part of uh, one of the bona fide uh, Vaishnav sampradays, and uh, he started to speak on one of the verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Us people, normal ordinary people in this world, however, we are listening to numerous uh, Hari Kathas, and we are pretending like we are listening to them. That bhav and that uh, vritti or inclination to listen to Harikatha that is re- the, the, these inclination and this bhava a mood that is required to listen to Harikatha is absent in us so thus we don't have that opportune mood and inclination to listen to Harikatha on the contrary one is seated with a mood to challenge what he is listening to so there is this tendency um, that okay, let's listen to what this person has to say, and I am not uh, less than anybody. Thus, the ego is um, trying to take control, and so when one doesn't have that mood of surrender while listening to this Hari Katha, then how can the Shabd the Brahman or the transcendental sound have any effect on the consciousness? Thus, behaving out of ego and wanting to debate and argue uh, such a material, materialistic or uh, uh, egoistic person is instead dragging himself down to hell. Each word in the Shastras have, have the potency, in the scriptures, they have the potency to uh, do immense welfare 
for the people in this world. But in order for us to benefit from the words of these scriptures, uh, some personal endeavor is definitely required. Thus, if we endeavor to move two steps forward, Thakurji will take ten steps forward for us. This is the way things move forward. Thus, Bhakti Vinod Thakur recited uh, Sarvasva Tomar, uh, Tomara, Tumito Thakur, uh, Tomara Kukura means you are you are the Lord and I am your dog. And yesterday we said, Amito Tomar, Tumito Amar, Ki Kaj Aparadhane. If one understands the purport of these words, then the central understanding of the Bhagavad Gita or the main understanding of the Bhagavad Gita will automatically get downloaded into your heart. One key or essential element that would come through after reading the whole Bhagavad Gita is completely summarized through this um, this this uh, these words that we just said Amitu Tomar Tomito Amar Kikaj Aparadhane This is the key goal of surrender or Sharnagati and nothing else matters therefore other than this and in order to explain this essence how long did it take Arjuna he considers the Lord as his friend and the Lord is definitely his friend this type of friendship is very rare extremely rare to find and the Lord himself also treats Arjuna as his friend and what is the goal of friendship that if one encounters a time an adverse time um, in order to support our friend in order to protect our friend we give every bit of support that we can lend to our friend thus the goal of friendship is that at the opportune time at the necessary time that a true friend shows that i can do anything and everything for you in order to protect you and to help you so in this discourse of Bhagavad Gita, which will be followed up soon, if Arjuna were to think that this Sri Krishna is not my friend, but my Guru, Vadiman Tam Prapanyam. Prapanyam would mean surrender. Thus, if you are surrendered, then whatever Thakurji is asking you to do, you should ensure that you follow through on that. Therefore, do everything and anything that Thakurji wants you to do. In that case, there will be no necessity for this long 700 verse um, long discourse by the Lord. Raise the question, O Maharaj, is Arjuna an ordinary person? Clearly, he is not an ordinary person. He is a friend of the Lord. But even though he is a friend of the Lord, is is there any... Um, any attachment to the material world or any any anything that's binding him to the material element even though there is no material attachment for arjuna he is fully liberated personality but then why did he ask these types of questions and behave in this manner because when one is under the control or bound by material objects that one that is when the athoto brahma jigyasa or this this desire um, to know um, arises within a living entity although arjuna is an eternal associate of the lord when the lord descended into this world um, to perform in order to perform this pastime of his the lord arranged for arjuna to be placed in this frame of mind and in this situation so without this situation arising without arjuna being placed into this situation it would not be possible that you know he would stand in front of the lord and ask him numerous questions and there would be a back and forth question and answer between the lord and his dear devotee thus even though arjuna is not uh, materially bound He's, he's not a, con a conditioned soul, but in order to bring to fruition this pastime of the Lord, uh, where the Lord is answering questions 
um, that are being posed to him, Arjuna was placed from an external consideration into this frame of mind where he looks bewildered. Many people read the whole Bhagavad Gita and they conclude that the key takeaway is what is one's personal duty to be performed. The Bhagavad Gita is universally accepted by everybody, whether you're a jnani, you're a karmi, you're a yogi, everybody accepts the Bhagavad Gita. On the contrary, something like the Bhagavatam it is rejected by the Mayavadis. They do not try to read it. Sri Shankaracharya did not attempt to comment on even one verse of the Bhagavad Gita. Why? Because the verses of the Bhagavad Gita are personified form of Lord Sri Krishna himself. The Lord appeared as the Shabda Brahman or the transcendental sound itself through the medium of the Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, Sri Shankaracharya did not touch the Bhagavad Gita for this reason. Um, he did put commentary on other scriptures, but he did not put commentary or uh, uh, make commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita, when it is viewed from different angles or from different points of vision, different meanings can be derived. The Karmi, the Mayavadi, the Dhyanmi, the uh, Gyani, the Dhyanvadi, all these different uh, people, when they are reading the Bhagavad Gita, they will see it from different uh, lines of vision or from, or from different point of views and come up with different conclusions even while analyzing the same shloka. So, uh, while we are talking in the context of Prasthanotray, the Bhagavad Gita can be given the first priority. Vedanta Sutra, Upanishad and Bhagavad Gita, all three would be covered in the Prasthanotri. Thus, understanding and imbibing the teachings of these three, Vedanta Sutra, Upanishad and the Gita Upanishad specifically, um, any person who is following these under the direction, under the surrender of a bona fide spiritual master can easily break away from this material world and find entrance into the spiritual world, the eternal abode of the Lord. Similarly, similar meanings drawn from the Upanishad and Vedanta Sutra under the guidance of the spiritual master can result in one's finding his way out of this material world. Yesterday we explained that uh, the Bhagavad Gita is divided by the Lord into three divisions. The first part talks about Nishkam Karmi Yoga or work or activity performed without any desire for material benefit. And within this too, there are many different gradations. So these 18 chapters of the Bhagavad Gita can be compared to a staircase and by traversing or climbing these, this staircase, um, imagine it to be uh, the different chapters in the Bhagavad Gita, one can reach the final destination. In order to traverse this journey, starting from Vishad Yoga or from the mode of Tamaguna or mode of darkness all the way to the mode of transcendence, one has to cross all these or climb through all these steps or chapters in the Bhagavad Gita. If one wants to traverse death or cross death, cross over death, then step by step one has to proceed along the staircase, deeply contemplating while stepping forward of course. And in the first six chapters therefore, the main contemplation is around Karma Yoga. Thus, um, Nishkam Karma Yoga will be discussed in the first six chapters. And then from chapters 7 through 12, uh, gradually one steps into the depths of Bhakti Yoga all the way to the 12th chapter. And from chapters 13 through 18, Gyan Yoga was discussed in depth. But Bhakti Yoga, as one can see, has been placed right in the center or in the heart of the Bhagavad Gita from chapters 7 through 12. Because this is a secret topic, this is an esoteric topic. 
this bhakti yoga it is a secret uh, treasure it is not given to an, to an ineligible person bhakti is wealth devotional service is wealth and it is the foremost form of wealth it's undoubtedly um, true that if a devotee follows the prasthana itre um without deviation then definitely the doors of liberation will open up for such a devotee but out of these three means of uh, achieving liberation of you know crossing the ocean of nations the bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavad gita has been given preference because it is the lord's voice the lord's own words personified and as far as the paraksha bhav is concerned the lord says in the 11th uh, chapter that um i am paraksha priya i want to approach indirectly paraksha not directly it is because the paraksha bhav or the indirect approach is dear to me and therefore for this reason i use the indirect or the paraksha roop to give instruction um to give permission etc paraksha mama priya this paraksha bhav is dear to me and in the context of the bhagavad gita the lord has opened uh, a dialogue he has um used his his tongue uh, for the benefit of his friend arjuna even though the lord is the friend of all living entities but specifically in this case for his dear friend arjuna the lord is uh speaking directly and the lord gradually through the passage of the 18 chapters of bhagavad gita has laid down the um possibility and the, and pro- and made the provision for um the living entity to reach liberation this is an auspicious path that has been laid forward there is no um lack of peace in fact this is a completely peaceful way that has been laid forward and gradually as the lord was giving his discourse um and uh, preaching his uh, words through his words he finally started to ask questions like a doctor would ask his patient you know how are you feeling Did you take your medications properly did you observe your dietary uh, restrictions properly in a similar manner the lord started to ask questions of arjuna just as a doctor would ask to figure out whether the patient is feeling better and whether it's he's fine the lord is trying to verify whether arjuna has heard properly all his instructions and whether he has been able to integrate what he has heard into his thought process towards the end arjuna confirmed to the lord that he has fully understood the instructions given to him so in the 18th chapter 73rd verse arjuna says nasto moha smriti labdha tvat prasadan maya chata स्थितोस्मि गतो संदेह करिष्य वचनम तव अर्जुन सेड वच्युत माय डिल्यूजन हैज बीन डिस्पेल्ड बाय योर ग्रेस इन रिमेंबरेंस ऑफ माय ट्रू स्वेल सेल्फ हैज बीन रीगेन्ड माय डाउट्स हैव बीन डिस्पेल्ड एंड आई एम सिचुएटेड फर्मली इन ट्रू नॉलेज आई विल नाउ कैरी आउट योर ऑर्डर thus when arjuna was expressing doubt whether he can kill his near and dear ones the lord immediately chastised him and told him that all these things that you are thinking about and and um, um as um uh, wise words are actually foolish statements by you thus chastising arjuna the lord said this is all your ignorance that you are expressing while well, thinking that you are talking like a wise man you are in fact um expressing all kinds of ignorance the lord chastised him loudly 
Arjun got a little upset and he was wondering uh, why is my friend talking to me in this manner? He hasn't talked to me like this before. As such, the Bhagavad Gita is written by Papayan uh, Vedavyas, by Sri Vedavyas himself. At the end of each chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, of the Bhagavad, uh, the Bhagavad Gita has been described as Shata Sahasra Samhita, Nishade Brahma Vidayan Yoga Shastra. That is how the Bhagavad Gita has been described at the end of each chapter. Yesterday we were trying to present this, or we were um, attempting to present this. There is a famous shloka from the Sri Garud Puran. Artho ayam, Amma Sutanam, Harat Artho Vivaneha, Kayatri Rupa Aso, Kayatri Rupa Aso, Vedanta Parivirtaha. What is the meaning of Brahma Artha Sutanam? Brahma Sutra means Vedanta Sutra. After completely contemplating all aspects of the Vedanta Sutra, what is the ultimate conclusion that one can draw? And similarly, what is the conclusion to be drawn at the end of Srimad Bhagavat Puran? Is there a difference in the conclusion to be derived between the two? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, has revealed that the ultimate essence of all the Vedas, the, out, the ultimate outcome of the Vedanta Sutras, the Upanishads, all these conclusions are available in the Sri Bhagavad Puran. Just by rendering this um, famous shloka, this famous verse from the Garud Puran, Sri Vedavyas, Sri Vedavyas is trying to convey that the essence in the Veda Sutras and the Brahma Sutras, all these meanings um, that are expected to be derived from these sutras are fully expounded and available through the Bhagavad Puran. All the teachings of the Vedanta Sutras are thus available through the Sri Bhagavad Puran. These instructions are available in applied form um, in the Srimad Bhagavad Puran. This is for certain that whatever we have heard from Guru Vaishnav and Shastra um, directly. However, if after listening from all these sources, um, the different scriptures, um, we have not arrived at the correct conclusion, then clearly we have not surrendered to these um, different entities, including Hari, Guru, Vaishnav, and the scriptures and the Shastras. So Anugatya, or uh, under the guidance, uh, we have to follow and understand the purports of all these um, scriptures. The Lord Shri Krishna has himself revealed in the Bhagavad Gita the main meaning or conclusion that can be derived from the study of all the Vedas. After studying all the Vedas, one could not find any um, hint or any um, any remembrance of Thakurji. Then in that case, if I have not understood the, the Supreme Lord, if I have not understood Thakurji, then all my study is of no use. It's wasteful. In our life, whatever learnings we have acquired from Srila Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur Mahashay, from Srila Narutam Das Thakur Mahashay, from Keshav Goswami Maharaj, from Sridhar Goswami Maharaj, from our entire Guru Varga. All our Guru Varga are like precious gems. If anyone tries to insult our Guru Varga, we will bite them out like dogs. We will not spare such a person who commits any form of blasphemy towards our Guru Varga. We have to be fearless. We have to not worry whether somebody is supporting us or not. We should be confident that we have to support the truth and we have to support the reputation or of our Guru Varga. We are crazy. We are ready to 
do the right thing with the assurance that thakur ji will take care of us so after studying all the vedanta sutras the ultimate conclusion that is drawn at the end of the shrimad bhagavatam so we will get the same conclusion after studying the bhagavad puran as from studying all the vedanta sutras one may say that one is not seeing any sweetness in the narration of the bhagavad gita all one is seeing is war an entanglement in violence but in true sense we are also engaged in a constant fight and battle and this battle is against maya or illusion the illusory energy of the lord against false conclusions apasiddhanta false philosophical conclusions we are constantly waging a battle against them thus whatever meanings are drawn whatever conclusions are drawn from the vedanta sutras they should be formed in an applied form in the shri bhagavat puran for sure the applied knowledge of the mahabharat all these philosophical conclusions thoughts are found in applied form in the shri bhagavat puran not only that but also the gayatri mantra that we chant that is also found in applied form in the bhagavat puran shridhani mahaprabhu has said om iti abeksharam om iti ekaksharam the ultimate conclusion of the chatur shlokas of the bhagavat puran they are all one they are not more than one they are definitely just one so the bhagavad gita falls under the um subject matter of the mahabharat and thus if it is said that the ultimate conclusion of the mahabharat and thereby the bhagavad gita is fully available in applied form in the bhagavad puran it would not be inaccurate thus the um, main all essence in applied form of the bhagavad gita is available in the shrimad bhagavatam when the discourse of the bhagavad gita is completed arjuna has fully understood the purport of the lord's instructions thus uh, as we heard earlier in the 18th chapter verse 73 arjuna is saying o lord i have understood everything that you have instructed and now i am ready to follow your instructions all my doubts have been dispelled and there is no reason for me to worry who is saying this in front of shri krishna arjuna his greatest disciple himself is saying this in front of shri krishna this very arjuna when the battle of kurukshetra came to an end after the resolution of all the problems and so many um, other significant events including the performance of the raj surya yagya thereafter um, after a long lapse of time when arjuna reached dwarka dham to find out how krishna is doing to check on him and at the same time while arjuna is reaching there to find out how krishna is doing yudhishthir maharaj is going uh, through a period of anxiety and is wondering oh where is lord shri krishna uh, it has been a long time since i have heard from him so thus lord yudhishthir asks uh, bhim o oh, bhim where is your younger brother arjuna it has been so long and he has not yet returned from dwarka right then arjuna arrived and he first paid his dandavat pranams or humble obeisances prostrated obeisances to his older brother his eldest brother shri yudhishthir maharaj but he is unable to say anything he doesn't feel bold enough to say anything to shri yudhishthir maharaj instead he starts to cry bitterly yudhishthir maharaj demands arjuna to tell him what exactly has happened by yudhishthir maharaj starts to ask arjuna a number of possible situations which might have caused him to grieve the way he was including for example has he lost um um in battle um against anybody or whether he has been unable to perform his duties have you not been able to keep your promise or perhaps there is some other reason that you are not telling me brother please tell me what has happened but arjuna just continues to cry and he does not feel that he is strong enough to tell yudhishthir what has really happened thus yudhishthir maharaj is wondering 
why a great warrior like arjuna is crying a brave person like arjuna should not be crying because this is not the behavior of a brave person a brave warrior vanchitaham harina bandhu rupena so thus arjuna started to elaborate what exactly happened my uh, dear friend who is in in the form of lord hari himself um has left me has departed what is the meaning of this the meaning of this is that thakur ji is no longer present no more um amongst us uh, this is the same arjuna who held the gandiv bow ye makar bhay rat par sawar karke kitna asphalan kiye hazaron hazaron veeron ka samne chunot diye after ascending the chariot this same arjuna had fought against so many warriors that very same arjuna is standing in front of you who is now lacking all courage to speak while arriving here i was defeated by a tribal um adivasi the reality though is that that adivasi is not no different from uh, shri krishna himself and disguised as an adivasi he came and he fought with arjuna and defeated him ultimately akuji made this arrangement to destroy um the pride of arjuna because until there is false pride involved there is no possibility of one um achieving um any benefits from the process of bhakti one cannot derive the perfection of bhakti um if one has the problem of false pride if one is uh, infected by false pride this is not possible so for what reason have we made such an elaborate explanation that is what we are going to talk about now the reason for that is that arjuna at the very end said at the time of the beginning of the war in kurukshetra um at that very time my greatest friend shri krishna the mighty shri krishna he who is lord hari himself and gave such a long discourse on the shri mad bhagavad gita all that discourse that was entirely spoken by krishna at this very moment has now converted into actual experience one may say that oh the gita was spoken a lot uh, many many days ago uh but arjuna is saying yes that is true but finally today the imports the the uh, deep imports and understanding uh have converged and given him actual realization of what was spoken this is known as practical realization of what we have heard whether it is a discourse or hari katha or some leela katha whatever it is when one has actual practical realization of it then we are successful but if these different things are done and we are not punished if one doesn't get realization and arjun is trying to say that finally after all these days up uh, since i have listened to the discourse of the bhagavad gita i now have full realization of what i have heard it basically means that he has finally digested and assimilated everything that he has um heard uh, uh, from shri krishna in the course of the bhagavad gita discourse it is very easy to give a discourse but to actually bring it into pra- into experience uh into realization is extremely hard without actual experience whatever we have heard um and whatever we have done on the path of bhakti or or in bhajan whatever we have done in the course of our bhajan um, if we don't have realization of it then it is not fruitful life itself is a form of a struggle and and uh, uh, fight a type of war we are fighting and the course of bhajan that we have taken uh, is also a form of uh, uh, conflict or war that we are undertaking establish the siddhant of philosophical conclusions 
and to de uh, defend um, unscrupulous acts of uh, uh, attacks by uh, people on our Gaudiya philosophy or on the Gaudiya Mat. These need to be fought back on and so in this manner we are also fighting a kind of war. So only after listening we can figure out what kind of war is going on. This whole period of Corona virus um, pandemic has actually been a big form of blessing for me. And during this period, I published five to six different articles by the mercy of Thakurji, thus proving that uh, although this coronavirus pandemic is, is a form of demon that is attacking and brutalizing people, but for someone like me, um, it is actually a form of mercy, a form of karuna. For the first time in my life, all these thoughts about Shastra, about scriptures have come together and all this has been enabled by the mercy of Thakurji. Although I am unqualified um, and incapable of deciding how far I will be able to uh, take the current course of, uh, of, real, of writing um, and, and uh, uh, progressing forward, um, it is only mercy of Thakurji and our Guru Varga like Sri Bhakti Vinod Thakur and others that we are moving forward, that I am able to be successful in this endeavor. Otherwise, by my own effort, I would not be successful. So, I would um, I would listen to the words of these Vaishnavas and imbibe it in my realization and then start talking about it and writing about it. Guruji has very strictly instructed that don't give a speech. I highly oppose any effort to give speeches because Guruji very strictly instructed not to give any kind of mundane speech. I followed his instruction and I gave up the practice of giving any kind of speeches. Long time ago, it's possible I used to give a speech, but I have discontinued that since then. By all this, the conclusion to be drawn is that the deep meanings, the deep uh, deepest meanings in the Bhagavad Gita can be or will be revealed only through the Srimad Bhagavatam. Definitely, these are all the thoughts um, of Sri Bhagwan, but when the Lord's thoughts are coming out or emanating from the lotus lips of the pure devotees of the Lord. So thus, I have proven that uh, there is uh, there is a lot of rasa and madhurya in the in the Bhagavad Gita. We may not be qualified to receive all of that, but over a course of time, in due course, um, we will attempt to taste that nectar, uh, which is being conveyed or em which is emanating from the lotus lips of the pure devotees of the Lord. In the Ch uh, Sri Chaitanya Ch Charita Amrita, um, Sri Swarup uh, Go Gosai, who is the main authority of uh, the Goddess Sampradaya, so he is like a caretaker uh, who is appointed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Specifically, Mahaprabhu has instructed that if there is any issue, then uh, Swarup Gosai, you need to step in. The Vishnu Vishnu Rajya Sabha uh, has actually uh, closed all its activities. The Vishnu, something like the Vishnu Vaishya, uh, uh, Vishnu uh, Rajya Sabha could be done by somebody who is a Mahabhagavat, who is a really, really pure devotee of the Lord. Like uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, like Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, for these kind of personalities it is possible. Jeeva Goswami Pad also. Uh, but however, for an ordinary person, this would be a great uh, difficulty. How can they do it? If something is going wrong, they don't have the courage to speak up. Even if something is brought to the notice of uh, these personalities who are not as powerful as the pure devotees of the Lord, they will shun those occurrences and say, well, I have not taken responsibility for everything that is going wrong out there. But in reality, yes, it is the responsibility of these personalities 
who are uh, claiming to be acharyas otherwise they cannot claim to be acharya if they are not stepping in and uh, trying to correct the wrongs that are being done they have taken the responsibilities to speak up for the well-being and auspiciousness of the sampradaya in reality you are engaged for your own well-being not for that of the sampradaya through the grace of our guru varga in the last 4 to 6 months various thoughts of the vishwa vaishnav rajya sabha have uh, uh, been established out there probably more than 4 to 6 months probably since february it's the day of uh, shri ram navmi by the mercy of shri ram uh we we prayed that you know he deliver us uh that he uh, take the responsibility for uh, delivering us so he started on ram navmi and after that shri ram constructed the ram setu and we are slowly trying to cross that bridge that the lord has created so as per the shri chaitanya charitamrita lord shri chaitanya mahaprabhu has given the responsibility to shri swarup damodar swarup gosai in return is uh, chastising a sahajya to go and read the bhagavat rishimad bhagavatam in under the guidance of a vaishnava take a fully one pointed surrender and um, shelter of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu's lotus feet always always take uh, the association of the eternal uh, associates of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu only then only then you will understand the philosophical conclusions um in the in the ocean of of uh, uh, from the from the ocean of these philosophical conclusions you will be able to understand a small a small part through the association this is actually a very valuable uh, instruction we should adopt these uh, learnings in our lives so thus go and take the association of the uh, vaishnavas because the granth bhagavat the book bhagavat is going to manifest itself in front of you how is that possible when the bhakt bhagavat or the devotee bhagavat uh, gives you his mercy then the granth bhagavat will manifest its knowledge to you this is because there is no difference between the book bhagavat and the person bhagavat aham bha- aham bhakt paradhino asvatantra hi dvija hi asvatantra eva dvija i am completely under the control of my devotees indeed i am not at all independent at no point and to no not even to a meager or a minimal extent do i at any point give up thinking about my devotees and think about anything else this is what the lord is saying and the devotees to understand this that the lord uh, aside from his devotees is not involved in thinking about anything else swarup damodar is called swarup damodar because he is the second swarup of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu every moment every fraction of a moment remember the association with the devotees of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu remember them and all the time associate with them what is the meaning of associating with the dear devotees of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu nitya means eternally so we are eternally trying to take association of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu's associates there are two meanings of the word nitya so nitya can mean daily and nitya can mean eternal in this context we are saying it means eternal thus there is a difference between the two and in this verse from shri chaitanya charitamrita we are saying we must take eternal association of the uh, associate of the um, uh, servitors the associates of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu not for a moment um, leave yourself bereft of the association of these um, uh, uh, close uh, associates um, uh, parshads parshadgan of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu this is because all the uh, deep um, secrets are contained all these secrets are actually locked in or hidden in the satsang or uh, saintly association 
ਇਟਸ ਐਟ ਦਾ ਟਾਈਮ ਦੈਟ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਚੇਤਨ ਨੇ ਮਹਾਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਗੇਵ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਜਗਦਾਨੰਦ ਪੰਡਿਤ ਦੀ ਅਪਰੂਵਲ ਟੂ ਗੋ ਟੂ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਬ੍ਰਿੰਦਾਵਨ ਧਾਮ ਹੀ ਆਲਸੋ ਗੇਵ ਹਿਮ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਵੈਲਿਊਬਲ ਇਨਸਟਰਕਸ਼ਨ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਦੈਟ ਯੂ ਸ਼ੁੱਡ ਡੂ ਪਰਿਕਰਮਾ ਆਫ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਗੋਵਰਧਨ ਪਰਵਤ ਬਟ ਨਾਟ ਕਲਾਈਮਬ ਇਟ ਐਂਡ ਫॉर ਨੋ ਮੋਮੈਂਟ ਲੂਜ਼ ਦੀ ਐਸੋਸੀਏਸ਼ਨ of uh, shri swarup damodar question is why did mahaprabhu give this instruction to shri jagadanand pandit such an acclaimed uh, personality he is not a small child of 2 or 5 years old then why is the lord giving this instruction specifically to him even for a moment do not leave the sangha or the association of sanatan goswami thakur ji is actually giving instruction that if i uh, give up the association of shri sanatan goswami who is the sambandh acharya then i could get into a lot of trouble thus shri uh, sanatan goswami has been called out as the sambandh acharya and one must not lose association of him for even a moment thus guru and the vaishnavas are always showing us the right path they are always concerned about our well being for some reason you are thinking that they are actually my enemy this is your mistake thus we spoke about the importance of shri bhagavat mahapuran and the importance of sadhu sangha devotees of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu are uh, the honey bees that are constantly tasting the nectar um, from the lotus feet of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in order to taste this honey that is emanating from the lord lotus feet all our guru varga have uh, become like honey bees so our guru varg is constantly hovering around the feet the uh, nectarian feet in the honey like feet of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu in this uh, very ocean of goddess siddhanta um so many waves are rising and one will be able to experience these waves by the association of the devotees of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu like our guru varg who are constantly manifesting these teachings but if we are following our own independent mind then we will never learn about these siddhantas even a dog if he develops a relationship with the honey honey bee like lotus feet of the lord what to speak of the lotus feet of the lord even with the scent of the honey bee like lotus feet of the lord thus if an if a dog establishes a relationship with the lotus like honey honey bee like lotus feet of the lord then he too shall receive some um, idea some uh, potency of that fragrance of which at the mahaprabhu's uh, lotus feet he will not be deprived by taking shelter of the lord's lotus feet even the dog he will experience that fragrance emanating from the nectarian honey bee like lotus feet of the lord and they will enter his nostrils even the dog will be able to tell who is a bhakta or devotee what is devotional service who is uh, a cheater and who is a person who is incapable and uh, useless isn't this the siddhanta that is explained in the shri chaitanya charitamrita in in the shri chaitanya charitamrita it is said that if one worships the lotus feet of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu by taking shelter of those lotus feet in uh, by through the worship of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu one will have access to the infinite ocean of shri gaudiya sampraday siddhantas philosophical conclusions even though i am a child i would still receive the mercy of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu there are numerous types of scholasticisms or you know debates that are ongoing and in the world there are so many types of isms like capitalism fascism so many different types of isms are prevalent in the world in mayavad there is guruism there is a constantly constant repetition of guru 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 without really understanding 
the essence of what guru means and just an obsession of saying my guru my guru this is my guru without really understanding anything as far as the essence of guru tatva when such mayavadis have made up their mind to destroy everything but they should first try to understand guru tatva completely these mayavadis are crazy in the ocean of siddhant or philosophical conclusion this crocodile uh, which is in essence all this scholasticism or um, different types of isms that are trying to attack us is is uh, is coming to attack us in the form of this crocodile in the uh, ocean of philosophical conclusions it will be easy for us to cross this ocean of philosophical conclusions only and only if we have and if we have received the mercy of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu shri gauranga mahaprabhu if we get the mercy of the devotees of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu then for sure we are assured of receiving the mercy of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu himself now my path will open up any true shastra any sad shastra not just the bhagavatam but any sad shastra if you want to experience the true essence of what the shastra wants to give us and we must take the shelter of shri guru vaishnavas for sure because the swarupa or the original identity of the shastras is non different from thakur ji himself and thakur ji is brought under their control by the devotees from external vision perspective shri shri gorkishor das baba ji maharaj is not very well educated but shri bhakti sadan saraswati thakur prabhupad heard the meaning of these shastras from his guru maharaj one time shri bhakti sadan saraswati thakur prabhupad went to shri gorkishor das baba ji maharaj to receive his charan darshan or to receive darshan of his spiritual master's lotus feet at that point shri gorkishor das baba ji maharaj was busy doing vanchana or uh, he he was uh, calling out the deceit of people but when he realized that uh, that uh, bimla prasad his disciple has come then he came out immediately from where he was and started to say oh my prabhu you have arrived and at that point shila gorkishor das baba ji maharaj asked shila bhakti sidan saraswati thakur to please accept asan or please accept a seat and so he offered him a seat then he said to shila bhakti sidan saraswati thakur prabhupad it is my desire that i listen to a shloka of shrimad bhagavatam from you shila bhakti sidan saraswati thakur then narrated or told the shloka to shila gorkishor das baba ji maharaj after the narration was heard shila baba ji maharaj asked um, shila bhakti sidan saraswati thakur to explain the meaning and shila bhakti sidan saraswati thakur in turn gave a very precious very valuable and beautiful meaning of the shloka to shila gorkishor das baba ji maharaj after listening to the meaning narrated to him Gorkishor Das Baba Ji Maharaj started praising Shila Bhakti Sadan Saraswati Thakur saying wow 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 very beautiful very beautiful ah and then Baba Ji Maharaj proceeded to ask Shila Bhakti Sadan Saraswati Thakur how about if we interpret and explain this shloka in the following manner and after saying thus Gorkishor Das Baba Ji Maharaj started to explain the verse with his in his own words thus he proceeded to give a discourse on shrimad bhagavatam which he might have in reality not even read before prabhupad saraswati thakur is saying that this meaning or interpretation explanation of the verse that i have heard from shila baba ji maharaj uh, about uh, uh, this particular shloka of the bhagavatam it is very difficult to imagine uh someone provide an explanation like this this kind of explanation could be provided by shri, Chait- shri chaitanya mahaprabhu himself perhaps but for any other person it is not possible because bhagwan himself is sitting in the heart of shila baba ji maharaj 
that is why i was able to listen to this kind of an explanation from him i am extremely fortunate shila prabhupad was very surprised he was marveling what a beautiful explanation uh, this is oh what what an amazing explanation this is prabhupad ji says that from external vision it seems like you know people around say that baba ji maharaj is not educated he is illiterate but who can say so in essence mature knowledge is manifesting in shri gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj after knowing that nothing else remains to be known that is the knowledge that shila baba ji maharaj spoke after hearing which no dissatisfaction remains in the heart this is known as bhagavat tatva in the shri chaitanya bhagavat shri vrindavan das thakur ji says look people don't understand the meaning of shastras and yet they are indulging in teaching and explaining the meaning of these same shastras the situation of such people is like an ass the ass is not happy when you lift all the weight off his back because he is used to that weight lying on his back thus vrindavan das thakur explained that people don't know the factual meaning of shastras without st- without uh, knowing the essence of these shastras people are just attempting to study and to teach these shastras these foolish people they are carrying uh, just the external meaning of the shastra on their back they are carrying the weight of just these external meanings of the shastras on their back they call themselves pandit or learned persons all foolish professors or foolish teachers apaka sa murak hai murk sab adhyapak krishner mayay chhariya krishner bhakti anno pathe jaye krishna bhakti ka rasta krishna bhakti ka sada seedha rasta krishna bhakti ka sada seedha rasta ko chhod kar after abandoning the straight forward uh, simple path of krishna bhakti these foolish people are going in the opposite direction by coming under the influence of krishna's illusory energy these people abandoning the path of krishna bhakti are going on other paths such people are essentially confused but at the same time they are claiming that they are very knowledgeable very learned pandit people in many gaudiya samaj or uh, societies uh, it is very true that the lord thakur ji has placed all kinds of facilities in the hands of the of the residents all the requirements for bhajan are fulfilled you know the 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 bona fide spiritual master is provided the right environment is provided but despite having been provided the opportune environment due to one's own misfortune instead of taking shelter of the mahajanas or these great personalities um instead of that these these unfortunate people are wondering what is the difference between karma kand and karma yog narottam das thakur has said that is karma kand and gyan kand these are all um vessels of poison the people who are mistakenly drinking this karma kand and gyan kand unfortunately because it is poisonous their lives are over in the meantime these people are thinking that they are drinking nectar but they are mistaken birth after birth these people are falling lower and lower and lower descending into the lowest planets and down into hell what is karma kanda what is karma yog what is giving the results of one's actions karma arpan what is nishkam karma yoga one should have clear understanding of each and every material object
or vishaya vastu otherwise one may not understand any of these topics clearly because it's not very easy what we're trying to say here is without the mercy of hari guru vaishnava it is very difficult to understand these different conceptions and one can easily get confused now after ex- uh, talking briefly about arjuna's condition um we will stop here battle is about to start the pandavas and the kauravas are assembled on the battlefield of kurukshetra to fight while in essence the pandavas are also part of the kuru dynasty but in order to differentiate the kauravas and the pandavas they are as such addressed separately as the war is about to start and thakur ji after taking the accepting the instruction of arjuna has guided the chariot right in the middle of the two armies on the battlefield of kurukshetra the lord who is extremely affectionate to his devotees bhakta vatsal is following the instruction of his devotee arjuna and guiding the chariot to the middle in the midst of both the armies now arjuna while standing on the chariot is trying to observe and scrutinize he is busy inspecting both sides of the armies as far as who has come to fight and how they have come and while observing these um warriors who have gathered arjuna's feeling or his his bhav has completely changed or transformed this brave warrior arjuna has suddenly transformed into a klip arjuna klip means one who is neither man nor woman when arjuna expresses his remorse shri krishna chastises him by telling him hey what are you saying whatever you are saying does not befit you on hearing the words of shri krishna arjuna received a jolt this dear friend this friend who stood by him through all his hardships had never spoken to him in such a manner before in previous times his dear friend had always used very loving words while speaking to him jovially the lord might have said a lot of things to arjuna but at this moment he was being very serious while chastising arjuna even though arjuna is a very brave warrior he was never prepared to hear these words that krishna was using for him it is natural that if a warrior is spoken to in this manner he will feel a jolt and that is because he is brave at heart indeed if someone says to a brave warrior that you are neither a man nor a woman um that person would definitely feel very shocked like when one would tell a very wise person hey you're extremely foolish then that person would get shocked just like chaitanya mahaprabhu said oh you have given description about the glories of shri ganga ji now pandit ji please explain the meaning of what you have just said meanwhile the pandit ji is wondering how mahaprabhu so, so quickly he has uh, memorized this shloka and uh, mahaprabhu is saying oh by the grace of uh, saraswati ji you have learnt all these things one may have received this kind of knowledge even from the demigods and further when mahaprabhu explained to uh, this pandit that whatever he has spoken uh, and how he has applied his knowledge in the context of this glorification of ganga ji is actually completely incorrect when shri jatane mahaprabhu explained in detail all the different mistakes the grammatical mistake and other mistakes that were present in in his um, uh, recitation at that point this pandit or this wise man was no longer remained a wise person instead he became crazy his self respect uh, got completely shattered and he did not have the courage to speak any further shlokas हंसते हंसते आप पंडित नहीं है मूर्ख है 
Maha, Mahaprabhu started to say uh, very jovially, very casually, you are actually not a Pandit, you are a fool. When the Pandit is proven to be a fool, clearly his self-confidence will break down. How come my Devi or my personal deity, Sri uh, Saraswati Devi, uh, allowed me to get insulted in front of such a small child? In private at night, this Pandit was asking Saraswati Ji, how did you allow me to get insulted in front of such a small boy? In front of Arjuna, there are currently two main decisions to be made. The first consideration is that the public is saying uh, that we are fully supporting Yudhishthir Maharaj and therefore, O oh Arjuna, you should fight this war to support us. It is your duty to save us in this situation. Currently, Arjuna is entangled or stuck right, uh, stuck right in the middle. One of the considerations is that he needs to fight on behalf of his nation and on behalf of his people. So it is a kind of great obligation or responsibility on the part of Arjuna to honor the wishes of his, uh, of his people, of his nation. And thus, this is a big decision that is bearing down on his mind, on his head. And on the other end, there is another decision with regards to the consideration that he has a relationship with these people, with his relatives who he is planning on fighting, his teachers who he is planning on fighting. All these people who are standing in front of me, who are my loved ones, what responsibility, what duty do I have towards them? There is, there is a Dronacharya, my guru, from whom I have, I have learned all the uh, knowledge of uh, archery, and uh, fighting and this is Pita Mahabhishma the one my great grandfather my, my, uh, uh, who has taught me how to speak he has taught me scriptures Shastra and he is Guru and in the opposite army I can see all my family and relatives is my duty to take the sword and start to cut up all these people all these friends and relatives who are standing in front of me never this can never happen thus all kinds of thoughts started to enter enter arjuna's mind on behalf of the nation and his duty towards society that side is saying fight it is your duty to fight you're a kshatriya you're a warrior you're from the warrior race you have to fight this is dharm yud this is the fight of righteousness and on the other hand I have my family and my loved ones, my grandfather, my other cousins, my relatives. Mahabhishma is there. My gurus are there. My cousins are there. What is my responsibility towards them? Is my duty to cut them up and throw them away? What duty should, sh should I fulfill? Oh Maharaj, this world, this samsar and this, uh, this society... They are such an incredible thing. But if you try to fulfill one duty or responsibility, it will be contradictory or it will not allow you to perform the other duty or responsibility. Please deeply consider what I am trying to say. That is my heartfelt request to all of you. This world and society are a strange place where if we try to do duty on one hand, we will not be able to perform other duties and responsibilities. We will be left behind. Jeevan Jindagi mein aisa hai samasya hai, chaaro ho. In life, there are so many, so many uh, problems all around. They are dispersed in all directions. There are all kinds of problems. It is only the sadhus, the sant, or the or, or the uh, pure devotees who do not have any kind of problem. Yet the people who are uh, external in nature, they are trying to manufacture problems, trying to stop these sadhus, these pure devotees from speaking. They are trying to figure out ways in which they can stop them from speaking. I have not willfully 
demanded anybody to give me anything and only thing i've done as sadhu is speaking the words of shila prabhupad bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur these other people they want that we that the sadhus we try to praise them that we talk about them and the topics that uh, benefit them but really is the sadhu sitting to praise these people who are materially motivated while honoring and glorifying guru maharaj we i am willing to become a dog without being a dog without being subservient to gurudev how else can i glorify him because while i'm trying to glorify guru maharaj how can my own pratishtha how can my own own fame and reputation be prominent anymore because i have i have relegated myself to be becoming subservient in that situation guru is guru he is the spiritual master all my uh, pratishtha or desire for fame and reputation i have already surrendered that at the lotus feet of shri guru do i have any liability remaining no only taking shelter of gurudev's lotus feet this world and society material world and society there is a heap of different duties and responsibilities where if you try to do one you will not be able to do another if you get very entangled in earning money then you will develop all kinds of problems in your body diseases in your body will start to come out like diabetes high blood pressure etc many diseases may come including corona virus my friends will call you and they will say come let's enjoy together if we go to study to gain education then we won't on the other hand have time for absorption in other material pursuits uh, to take rest or to um uh to 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 gratify the senses in other ways thus it's not possible to have much time left if you're doing one thing then it comes at the cost of um, giving up on something different shri ramchandra bhagwan himself faced a similar dilemma even though shri ram is the lord himself he is performing human like pastimes leelas if he goes to save his wife sita devi then it will become difficult to uh, protect it uh, it will be difficult to uphold the opinion of people if uh, if the lord decides to uh, instead take care of his people then sita devi will not be around this is the rule of the world and society in general akur ji showed this himself by performing the these leelas or these pastimes if we go to make uh, india a free country then as a result it had to be broken up into different parts two or three parts and on the contrary if one were not to try to free the country uh, um or if if one were to try to avoid having the country to be split up into uh, different parts then the country may have not gained independence is the nature of life if you try to fulfill one duty then you couldn't be able to fulfill another one and this is how things are thus slowly contemplating we will understand the glories of geeta ji the um the 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 different glories of of geeta ji contemplating and understanding the thoughts of the geeta and glorifying the geeta thus one should pre- you all should prepare yourselves to become established or to enter into the essence of this scripture every day gradually attempt to enter into this uh, scripture prepare to enter into the scripture then you will be able to understand what is madhurya or sweetness and what is dhyan or meditation what a priceless uh, uh instruction this bhagavad gita is what exactly is contained in the bhagavad gita uh all these different thoughts you should keep contemplating about them it is my request that you keep digesting these and do so with full patience
Shastras are not trivial or crazy by nature. In other words, a person who is listening to the Shastras cannot be a crazy person. Only a person who has patience, who has the ability to behold thoughts and to contemplate. Only for that person, Shastra is meant. One who has taken shelter, that person slowly and gradually by listening, person will in the end attain victory. All the Shastras are available in this world, but with money power, can you um, read all these Shastras? Can you understand all of them? Try to read these Shastras and explain what have you understood. Pranipatena pariprashnena sevaya upadekshanti te jnanam jnaninas tatpadarshina The main thing here, therefore, is surrender. What we started speaking about, the instructions of Prahlad Maharaj, remember them and contemplate them. The sadhus, they are such an ocean of mercy. Please bring this into your thoughts. And in this way, you can make your life successful. This is my request to all of you. This is my request at the feet of everybody who is listening here. One chakal pataru bhyas chakripa sindhu evacha patatanam pavane bhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha.